नमस्ते हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द एनपीटेल कोर्स रोल ऑफ क्राफ्ट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन इंटीरियर आर्किटेक्चर वी आर ऑलरेडी इन द फोर्थ वीक एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस मॉड्यूल एटीन सो मॉड्यूल एटीन फोकसेज ऑन दी केस स्टडीज फ्रॉम राजस्थान एंड वी ऑल नो दैट राजस्थान इज़ अ वेरी रिच स्टेट ऑफ इंडिया इन टर्म्स ऑफ इट्स इंटीरियर आर्किटेक्चर स्टाइल्स एंड वेरीड आर्ट एंड क्राफ्ट फॉर्म्स इट इज़ नोन फॉर इट्स सेवरल क्रिएटिव एंड कल्चरल इंडस्ट्रीज so it is very uh, obvious that we are going to have some case studies from rajasthan when we are talking about craft and technology and interior architecture so the overall contents for today we are going to go through a visual repository of space making crafts and interior architecture of rajasthan and we will see different case studies and we will have specific focus on city palace udaipur and havelis of shikhavati before this we will have a small overview also and then we have references towards the end i would like to begin by discussing this very interesting and graphical craft map of rajasthan these crafts maps of india are developed by jaya jetli ji and each state has a different craft map and they uh, celebrate and discuss varied art and craft forms of that particular state so when we talk about rajasthan rajasthan is so rich in these craft forms and we see over here you know the different interior architecture styles we see the jaipur hawa mahal over here we see different elements space painting elements we see dome and chhatri and we see over here the mention of painting so different paintings from rajasthan then stone work and uh, there are different kinds of uh, metal works that we see in uh, rajasthan that also we can see over here in this map then we see these puppets and toys and rajasthan is very famous for its puppets and toys and puppet shows so we see the mention of those over here and we see the handmade paper we see different kinds of textiles rajasthan is known for its tie and dye bandhani work shibori textiles and different kinds of textiles and there are different kinds of uh, stories of the uh, uh, you know the kings and the queens and the mahals the palaces all that we see you know so it's a very elaborate map and we see different kinds of crafts of rajasthan the very famous blue pottery over here we can see so all of these then here we see the terracotta and the you know uh, the mulela terracotta craft over here we see so this is the potter's wheel and terracotta and then we see different terracotta objects of use as well as the craft forms which are votive and religious so we see different craft forms over here and these maps were developed to uh, disseminate promote celebrate all these different craft forms of varied states of india so we will also see now an overview of few interesting interior architecture styles and the craft forms of rajasthan and then we will go to specific case studies so this is the very famous hawa mahal all of us know about it many tourists come to visit this place it is known for its interior architecture style it is known for its passive design features and uh, it is known for its uh, climate responsive design and it's quite aesthetic also so it's a very famous building and it's in jaipur and rajasthan is known for its interior architecture so i have put this in the very first slide you know to celebrate the timelessness of interior architecture styles of rajasthan and the craft forms the art forms which are also uh, space making and they add to the interior architecture styles we see the very famous amir fort over here which is in jaipur so we see the space making elements the arches the mirror work that we can see over here the char bag the gardens which are in the front we see all these stone carving stone inlay jali work and this mirror work which is done in the lime plaster so we see all these rich interior architecture art craft forms here this is again very famous uh, jawahar kala kendra in jaipur and it's a multi art center it was designed by charles coria the very famous indian architect and uh, it has several art forms and the inspiration for the plan of jawahar kala kendra came from the original plan of the jaipur city so if you are interested and you want to go into the details then you can see that it has nine squares with the central square which is kept open and then we see lot of art forms over here which reflect the cosmos the universe the way of life and different 
art forms which express our day to day lives. So, it is a very beautiful and highly celebrated building and Rajasthan is known for it and its architecture is very inspiring. Then we see over here some pictures from Mulela, uh, Rajasthan and Mulela is known for its terracotta craft. So, we see you know the objects of use to the votive terracotta craft where you know we see the sculptures and uh, we see the religious uh, sculptures and motifs here we see gods and goddesses and we see over here a workshop of uh, Mohanji whose uh, workshop is this where it was documented. So, it is a very famous craft and it is practiced in several ages and it still continues this village is there and the families of the craft person still work on this craft and we see lot of the applications of these uh, terracotta uh, techniques now in modern construction, contemporary construction uh, precisely. And we saw in one of the modules an overview of transformation of terracotta through ages and we will also discuss it once more in detail when we uh, discuss the module transformation through ages of different materials and craft forms. So, this is Mulela. This is Sahelion Ki Bari in Rajasthan and we see this beautiful central space which has this water body in the center and which instantly creates an experience and enriches the environment and the immediate surroundings of the user. We also see the timber and metal craft over here in doors and other space making elements. So, because these are just overviews I have put limited pictures and we will discuss in detail two specific case studies. These are some pictures from the Shilpgram which is again uh, a sort of craft village which has come up to celebrate these uh, art and craft forms and we also see the indigenous dwelling units and interior architecture styles which have been demonstrated and exhibited over here. So, we see the surface craft, the paintings over here, here also we see certain paintings, here we see you know the kind of surface finishes that are seen in the indigenous dwelling units of Rajasthan. Again a motif this is Mandana, we see again some dwelling unit and the uh, way a Rajasthani you know uh, traditional house looks like, this is some music performance that was happening. So, all these are creative and cultural industries, building crafts and interior architecture styles and Rajasthan is very rich in them, it is very known for them. Now, coming to the main case study which is city palace Udaipur, it is a very famous uh, palace and it is quite old and the legacy continues, it is uh, there uh, today also, it is like a city in itself and uh, it has uh, different shops, museums, schools for kids, library and uh, different activities are demonstrated live, it has a light and sound show. So, it is a very rich experience to be here in this palace to uh, learn about the interior architecture of that time, how it is timeless and what are the different space making elements which are seen in this palace and which are on a huge humongous scale. So, like these are the people standing here and then we can see the scale, it is monumental, different art and craft forms we see over here. So, we are going to discuss all that. These are some interesting uh, images that we see here over here. These are the uh, Tops Fields book, it is a very famous book, City Palace Museum, Udaipur, Paintings of Mewar Court Life. So, these are paintings from Tops Fields uh, books and we see over here City Palace Udaipur and interior architecture is highlighted, the court life is highlighted, we see the art and craft forms highlighted in these paintings. So, we see the stained glass work over here. Over here we see it. this is the emblem of uh, the uh, dynasty and we see these different kinds of uh, space making elements. Here also we see all these distinct art and craft forms. So, we see mirror work and glass work over here, meenakari work, mosaic work, this all over here we see the artwork. And uh, when we go uh, inside the palace all these spaces exist and they have been documented and through these paintings they have been disseminated throughout the world and City Palace Udaipur is quite famous for its uh, architectural style and varied art and craft forms, especially the mirror work and glass work. 
So we see all that in these paintings. These are few more which talk about the you know palace, interior architecture and what all activities the queens indulged in, some you know conversations happening and over here the meeting and the gardens and the pigeons. So we see the uh, life of the palace, we see different stories and we get to know about that era. So these are very interesting paintings, so I thought of putting few slides. So if we talk about the several art and craft forms that we can see inside the city palace Sudaipur, uh, the few of them which are listed and which are of prime importance are glass work, mirror work, meenakari or the inlay work. In the local parlance it is called meenakari. There is also a bit of ivory work over here. We see a lot of carvings, both stone and timber. Then there are a lot of paintings, especially the Pichwai paintings. So Pichwai paintings are very famous and they are, they, their origin is Rajasthan and uh, they have been uh, shared and talked about and disseminated for their subject, for their content, for their expressions. There is also ceramic and tile work that we see in this palace. So these are some pictures to give an overview of different spaces, different space making elements and different art and craft forms. So we see over here mirror work, glass work over here. This is again mirror work. We see a mix of several craft forms over here. There is mosaic, there is inlay, there is a mirror, there is glass. And this is the more chalk, the central courtyard and then we see the peacocks over here which are considered very auspicious uh, in this palace in Udaipur in the Mewar dynasty. So we see all those uh, great art and craft works over here and we see also certain motifs which are very auspicious and uh, which are very uh, symbolic of the way of life of people over here. Again here we see a lot of mirror and glass work, here we see a lot of work this is also quite intricate detail. So we see all that and along with these space making elements and the craft forms that enhance them, there is also a very evident manifestation of tradition and culture that comes out through stories and motifs and the kind of, uh, the kind of forms and designs and uh, you know the like the gods over here we see their belief system we see the peacock like I just discussed. So we all, the, all these uh, symbolize and give the traces of the tradition and culture being followed by the people there. These are some other details. So here also we see the glass inlay, the colored glass. We see the paintings over here. Then here we see this quite detailed decorative surface art which is you know flanking this huge arch over here. We see the stone jollies with uh, glass work over here. Here we see the mirror and glass uh, inlay work over here and these are you know the tiles that clad the surface and they are quite decorative and they have floral motifs and they have nice subtle colors. So we see all those details in the palace. Again some rich glass work here some glass work it has some mirror work also. Here we see this inlay work this is a stone jali this we see over here and the architecture of Rajasthan is very famous. It is known for its havelis, for jalis, for forts and palaces and we see the jali almost in all the typologies of the buildings and it is it has been proved that it is a passive design feature. It also looks quite aesthetic and it also allows for the play of light and shadow. Here again we see some stone jollies with some glass work over here. This is stone carving over here that we see. So these all different space making elements they are adorned uh, with different uh, craft forms and which are hand practiced and which are quite uh, tedious to do and it reflects on the uh, skills of the master craft persons. This is the uh, inlay of blue glass and this we see over here the uh, painting on the ceiling of one of the uh, rooms or chambers in the uh, palace. Again some more details here we see the wood carving again a stone jali over here. Stone carving we see the twin capitals over here 
uh, twin columns. Uh, we see a lot of carvings on the stone over here. This is again stone jali with the colored glass. We see those details. And here again the Meenakari work, the mosaic and the inlay work. We see all those details throughout the palace. And it's quite uh, intricate, quite detailed out. And the entire palace, it is so huge, but everywhere in every nook or corner, there is some or the other interesting detail that we come across. Some more details here, we see again some glass inlay, some timber and metal work. Here we see some surface painting, surface finishes. Here on the ceiling, again we see some paintings. It is like the about the uh, Ras Leela and we see Lord Krishna over here. We see timber and metal work. Again stone jali over here and some paintings which are, you know, surface uh, narrative paintings, finishes. These are some Chinese styles, then again the uh, blue glass inlay work, different kinds of geometric motifs that we see in the Jali work over here. This is again the colored glass work, some paintings, some original narrative surface finishes. Here again we see the uh, glass, the colored glass, from here the entire city is visible. So all these details over here we see. So uh, if we come... Uh, to the Sheesh Mahal, you know, the Palace of the Mirrors. It is, uh, City Palace has several uh, sub palaces or chambers or rooms, but the Palace of Mirrors or the Sheesh Mahal is very famous. Like, it has been visited and talked about and written about several times, and it is quite a vision. It, it looks quite aesthetic. It was completed in 1632. The main decorative features are the mosaic works in convex mirror glasses and they were called as lipo glass. So we see uh, already some kind of influence of glass work, you know, on the uh, city palace of Daipur. But before the glass came in, it was majorly the mirror work that it was famous for and the mirror work of Rajasthan in local parlance is called as Thikri Kam Rajasthan. So, there are several stories associated to why it got the name Thikri Kam, but uh, just restricting to what it is uh, mostly called, is it is called Thikri Kam. So, work in Udaipur is probably carried out by artisans from Gujarat or Sin. So, these kinds of influences are also seen. So, migration of craft persons and then, you know, the skills of craft persons of one state being employed in another state and sort of... Uh, cross connection, exchange and transfer of ideas, all that could be seen. And there are several parallels to Sheesh Mahal Udaipur. We can see such examples in Gujarat, Agra, Delhi, Tanjore, Indore, Mathura. So there are several parallels that existed and there was this kind of uh, celebration of art that was happening across India and you know all these skills were patronized and these kinds of palaces and forts and artworks were coming up. Just to give an overview of what different kinds of mirrors were used. So, mirrors used in Rajasthan, they are majorly brought from Gujarat. This is the current uh, scenario and at that time also there was uh, an exchange. So, there are commercial mirrors, this is one category. So, they are 1.5 to 2 millimeter thick. So, I am just giving the technical details. They have a tin plating and lead oxide coating on the black face. They have a silver tinge and look too artificial. Most recent examples, say 50 years that we see in interior architecture, are probably the examples of these commercial type mirrors. Another one is mirrors for which specific glass shapes majorly spheroidal, are cast, polished well and then coated and this coating is done with silver plus there is a coating of tin or lead or both which is applied on it. Silver starts appearing blackish due to oxidation but it also produces a good luster. So, sometimes that choice one has to make. These examples are used in Udaipur, Mughal architecture and many other mid-age buildings say 50 to 120 years old. So, these kinds of mirrors could be seen in city palace Udaipur. And then there are older works of mirror decorations which have lead mirrors. They are often very thin mirrors. 
in local parlance in the kutch and saurashtra embroidery there are khap mirrors that can be seen they are called khap mirrors so they are similar to those they are very thin so we see these three major categories or types of mirrors in these different buildings and we also saw which particular ones uh, are seen in city palace udaipur then if we talk about the mirror work and glass work there are several techniques that are employed so we can see this mosaic work which is more or less flat and it has very uh, intricate details this is embossed as we can see from this picture so it is embossed these are colored mirrors so we see different techniques uh, which are employed which requires different skills and which gives different appearance to the surface and the entire uh, visual appeal changes accordingly then some details again related to the mirror work so the fixing of mirrors happens like this we can see in the pictures mirrors have to be first shaped and then for shaping the mirrors we have tools like rounders we can see over here the work being done in a workshop so these are the convex surfaces and these shapes have been cut from the larger sections or sheets with the help of these rounders and then we also have glass cutters and knives and all these tools are used to do this mirror work this is important so i would like to focus a little bit and it also talks about history and influences and exchange of ideas the usage of glass so up till now we were specifically talking about mirrors and then also the usage of glass started happening and there was lot of influence from europe so the usage of glass in mewar arts is observed from around late 18th century through mughal and european influence initially the glass was imported from belgium the 18th century usage of glass was as inlay work of colored glass a mughal style imitating pietra dora work of inlaying precious stones in white marble now this kind of inlay work is an imitation of mughal style which is called as pietra dora work and we can see this inlay of precious stones in white marble and we can uh, instantly when we talk about white marble and precious stones taj mahal the word taj mahal comes to our mind so this kind of inlaying work has been seen in red fort of agra and delhi of course taj mahal and many other mughal buildings various colored glasses were inlaid in fine lime plasters in the city palace so lime plaster again it was a very traditional indigenous material and it was extensively used in these a uh, traditional interior architecture built forms that we have been discussing throughout the course and lime plaster has its own advantages and it has great material properties and uh, there are several books discussing that this artwork further evolved in mewar architecture use of glass and glaze tiles became very prominent in interiors in the 19th century and glass mosaic of udaipur city palace walls became the identity of this mewar arts so this is how from europe especially from belgium and through the mughal patronage this kind of you know art and craft form it flourished and there was lot of usage of mosaic and glass inlay and uh, that's how it also got disseminated to other different parts of the country now discussing a little bit in detail what are the different kinds of techniques and space making crafts or the building crafts that we see in this palace here we see this blue glass inlay work it is the ceiling of pitam nivas over here this is again a very intricate detailed work this is fine glass inlay work with tiles this is seen in kishan vilas sat tanka now this uh, condition assessment and mapping work is majorly done by drona and i was working with them during my internship and after working with rona i also wrote one monograph focusing on city palace udaipur so all this data is from both these sources here we see use of chinese tiles and the stained glass over here this is badi chitrashali now this is in a bad condition and there are efforts being made to restore preserve and you know try to conserve these uh, building crafts and uh, styles 
Here we see the stained colored glass which is set in stone screens. These are stone screens and we see the stained colored glass and it is set in stone screens in lime mortar. And this is Amar Vilas, one picture from there. Here this is Moti Mahal and we see very fine mirror work like we were discussing the different kinds of mirrors also thick and thin. This is slightly fine and compared to the other places that we saw. This is stained colored glass again set in stone screens in lime mortar and this is Mukut Mandir, another uh, place within the palace. Over here if we see, here and here, we see this flat mirror work in combination with inlay. This is in Badal Mahal. Again here we see glass inlay work in lime plaster and niches. So here in niches and over here we see some glass inlay work. This is the famous Sheesh Mahal and here there is a use of curved mirror pieces. So this is quite a vision and this lights up the entire interiors if there is just a little source of light over here. We will see the demonstration and one uh, illustration. Here again we see stained glass work in stone screens which is set in lime mortar. This is in Chandar Mahal. This is very fine mirror work in Moti Mahal and stained glass work set in stone screens in lime mortar. This is Kacheri Mahal. Here this is not very clear but if we can see over here this blue color. This is 20th century inlay work of glass in ceilings and arch frames. So these are arch frames over here. It is also seen on the ceilings. This is again 20th century inlay work of glass in ceilings and arch frames and they are different colors we see over here green and red. Again here we see these lines of glass inlay and we see you know some mirror work and glass work. These are uh, seen in Vani Vilas. This is a very detailed uh, you know panel where we see a combination of different kinds of uh, space making crafts. Different kinds of uh, glass work, mirror work, stone work, it is a combination. So we see permutations and combinations as well at different places. This is again stained glass work. It can be seen in the octagonal bastions and projecting charokas. And this is in Khush Mahal over here. We also see Victorian tiles and glass inlay work over here. This is in Ganesh Deodi. So we see so many different kinds of techniques and space making crafts and space making elements and uh, we can try to Imagine, I mean the people who have been there, it is definitely quite an experience and the people who are just seeing it for the first time, you could imagine, you know, what amount of detailing has gone into the making of this palace and you should actually go there on site in the palace and have a look. Now this is the most exquisite work, craft that we see in city palace Udaipur. So here we see this work of glass, glass inlay, mirror inlay, paintings. And this is all seen in the Moor Chalk. So this is quite detailed out and it is very time consuming. It is all done by hands, by the craft persons who are skilled. Then just to understand, uh, you know, how this mirror work functions and what are the different functions and purposes of mirror work and uh, not just aesthetics, but you know, some other functional aspects and technical details. So here we see mirror work in all these different pictures, it functions as space making element. So it enhances the particular space making element, it highlights it, it focuses it, like a niche gets highlighted if there is a mirror work. This space making element becomes quite distinctly you know, visible, it comes in focus. Over here we see you know, the mirror work is done to create multiple reflections and accentuate the space and the art form which adds meaning to the space. So there are several reflections that could be seen over here and uh, it looks quite aesthetic also. Then mirror work has been used in this palace as a manifestation of religion, culture and tra uh, traditions. This we discussed earlier also in one of the slides. So that also mirror work is enhancing and uh, facilitating. Here mirror work of course, for aesthetics, it looks quite aesthetical and then it also lights up the interior. So like I was discussing, if we just have one source of light, it will have multiple reflections and it will lit up the entire interior space. 
so that's also why mirror work is used and some cues could be taken for contemporary design as well from this uh, principle of dispersion and reflection how the light scatters and it gets reflected so here it is getting reflected in different panels here this is very interesting mirror work for bringing in what lies outside by creating a virtual world so if there is something over here suppose a peacock and there is a mirror over here then this gets reflected over here and it creates a virtual world for the user who is inside this space also there is very interesting uh, story you know that uh, it's mentioned in several uh, articles and blogs that mirror work was also used for security purposes so it would reflect the foes or your enemies and you could instantly get you know the alert so that is another purpose if we talk about certain uh, functions and certain uh, technical um, details of where all mirror work can be used not just specific to city palace of udaipur then i found uh, some uh, interesting uh, you know points to discuss and i have collated them so mirror reflects what is placed near it so it again a virtual world and we are in the control of what it reflects by applying mirror to the long wall in a hall it can make it seem wider so application of a mirror and uh, you know how a material when applied in a certain way can create a perception of space so those are the interesting details that go with application of mirror we can mirror all the walls and ceiling in the entry foyer to make it seem infinite that is again a visual perception optical illusion or detail then a mirror folding screen it can add light sparkle and drama to a dark corner mirrors when they are placed they are very glamorous they act as versatile accessories now there is an interesting idea to mirror an old window frame to give the illusion of a window on a dull wall colored mirrors add further glamour and then these mirrors can innovatively be used to bring in beautiful views of the outdoors so there are several other functions also these are few interesting ones and which are quite easy and handy and do not require too much of rocket science so these are some interesting ones now mirror work just adding to you know what we saw in city palace udaipur that is very uh, intricate work and it requires master craft persons and huge skills but in contemporary times just to have a look how it is getting transcended into different expressions and different ideas i just put some pictures so these are some contemporary uses and of course the mirrors are not the same which we see in city palace udaipur uh, they are very the, the first category of mirrors that we saw they look quite artificial they are of recent origin and they are uh, just fixed with the help of adhesives it's not lime plaster over here then i saw this interesting partition screen at nid where they have used this mdf framework and they have put this mirror uh, over here these mirror pieces and they have tried to create a partition screen so there were some contemporary examples these are some photographs of vedas new delhi it's a restaurant and here there is an extensive uh, application of mirror work and it's very contemporary its techniques are quite different so here here over here we can see the details over here so these are contemporary expressions now we'll move on to uh, shikhavati so it's a region in rajasthan and it's very famous for its havelis and if we see the havelis of shikhavati it has very rich uh, building crafts and space making elements we can see these surface narrative crafts we can see the timber craft over here we see metal crafts over here we see you know also the details in the hardware so we see all these uh, details in this uh, these havelis and they are particularly known for their paintings and uh, they these paintings were done with natural pigments they were all done by hands and they capture different subjects different stories from that era different uh, aspects of society so all those subjects and contents they are reflected in all these uh, narrative works this is one of the havelis in shikhavati and this is the entrance door and we can see how intricate and how ornamental it is and it's all done in timber 
and like many other places we see in Uttarakhand also, they have the Ganesha motif over here and this is to keep off the evils and if you are standing over here, we get a glimpse into the inside world. So, this is the central courtyard and these are beautiful space making elements and all the narrative surface craft that we see over here or we also see the structural elements like brackets. So, all those details are seen and these are the different subjects that I was mentioning. So, there are stories of kings, there are stories of gods. We see this steam engine which is more out of curiosity and imagination because you know there is something like this which uh, the subjects or the masses they wanted to see in India as well if it was happening abroad or it was a recent invention with the Brit which the Britishers brought with them. So, all those kind of uh, stories. So, it could be to celebrate something which has recently uh, come to our country or it could be out of curiosity and imagination and out of that desire and will to have it. So, those kinds of details. We also see the details of the palace over here, interior architecture, this main door over here all these uh, you know paintings and motifs, flower motifs. We also see the Krishna Radha Leela on one of the ceilings over here and this is very interesting. We see the game of Chaucer being depicted over here. So, all these are different subjects and contents we see in the different uh, Havelis of Shikhavati. These are some more pictures. Again, we see the space making elements and how the connections are established you know between the first floor and the ground floor and all these structural details and the narrative works over here. This is from outside the facade. So, we see them in the interiors as well as on the facades of the building and they are quite detailed out with lot of stories. Even in the niches and small corners we see the narrative space making crafts like these. Again some very rich uh, narrative surface crafts. We see over here very richly detailed work done. This, these are the corner details again structural elements, surface narrative crafts over here. We also see certain details in furniture and hardware. So, here we see metal and timber work and this we see over here some detail and design also in the handles and the hardware. We see the details in the timber and metal door. This is a very, very intricate and beautiful entrance door. This is metal and timber, we see that. Again, another surface narrative craft on one of the ceilings. Here we see this richly carved and ornamental bracket, which is uh, made out of timber. So, all these details are seen over there. Again, some pictures of the Havelis and the space making elements and the narrative works. This is a recent example which is adaptive reuse. Of course, it does not have the same spirit and feeling. The narratives are missing, but in terms of space making elements and in terms of uh, the quality of space, uh, still it is a, a good example to have a look at. So, I would like to end up with two interesting quotes. Architecture should speak of its time and place, but yearn for timelessness. So, whichever examples that we saw from Rajasthan, they are very distinct and unique and they have a timelessness about them and that is what uh, a design should aim at. It should yearn for timelessness, whether it is a small product or interior architecture. Another one which is specific to Jaipur since we are talking about Rajasthan, resplendent in the hues of its noble and magnificent past. The historic city of Jaipur stands out as one of the most spectacular and culturally vibrant destinations in the world. So, this is very interesting. It is very culturally vibrant and what happens in the culture and the way people live also reflects on its interior architecture, costumes, food and different other creative and cultural activities. Next module will focus on case studies from Uttarakhand and now the references. These are very specific to today's module and then later as usual we will have a summation of all the other important references. So, city palace, museum, Udaipur, the paintings that we saw, technique of glass making, scientific study of Indian glass. Though we have not 
gone into the details of you know scientific uh, study and the techniques here this was more of a visual repository and just to you know map and document what are the different kinds of techniques and the space making crafts that we see but in one of the modules when we talk about decoding systems probably we'll see a little details about the system embedded within this craft of mirror work and glass work so nuances of thikri kaam then understanding the importance of art in interior architecture so these are few specific ones that uh, are detailed out for this module space making craft stone craft that we see in rajasthan these are summed up from what all we have been discussing together thank you